Hi, my name is Todd Cahill. I just want to say thank you so much for watching this video today. Uh, I'm very excited to talk about this specific subject about anxiety, and uh, I want to dive into it. Um, you definitely subscribe to my YouTube channel. I want to make a lot more videos. My brand is really leadership. Um, I love John C. Maxwell. I used to work for him 20 plus years ago. I read my first John Maxwell book when I was in eighth grade, and I just love leading myself. I mean, I, I think it's such a game every day that I get to lead myself first, uh, become exceptionally great at it, which I'm not there right now at all, but it's just that incredible game that we all get to play and how we can get better. But we have to have a personal growth plan, right? Like John Maxwell always talks about. Today, I wanna to talk about um, a lot of that, but at the same time, how to get rid of some of your anxiety. Not all your anxiety, because I think some anxiety is actually good because it prepares you for a compelling f future. It gets you out of your comfort zone. But there is some negative anxiety that we need to get rid of. And I could definitely talk with, um, kind of, well, I have, I've had a lot of anxiety and I could talk from experience on this subject because it has held me back. I think I could have been 10 times more successful, you know, where I'm at now if I didn't have to deal with it, okay? If I really was just a normal, let's say a normal human being, I got anxious about the, 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 the basic stuff, but I didn't get all the time like, oh, what do I do, what do I do? Constantly, my brain is always like, you know, thinking about the future, thinking about the future, and I have to keep reminding myself to stay in that present, okay? So I don't wanna offer any corny advice either, cliche stuff that maybe you've already heard. I'm not gonna talk about meditation today. Not that I don't agree with some of it, but I'm, I'm gonna talk about like what to do, like how to take massive action right now. So there's five things I wrote down. Again, I've done these things and everything I post on my Instagram and Facebook and social media, I try to obviously live and breathe what I post. Uh, I, I've done this, I'm gonna to continue to do it and I just wanna share it you know, for anyone that's willing to watch it and uh, hopefully, like I said, add value to you today about it. So the first thing that I do to get rid of anxiety about that dang future, right? You know, and of course it could be a very compelling future. And I'm not, it's not that I'm not excited about my future, but you know, there's certain things like even if it's Thanksgiving or Christmas or the new year, or, you know, even looking from, you know, looking at the past and being like, well, I haven't even accomplished what I thought I was going to accomplish. And now I got to, you know, continue to do this. Or maybe you're in a kind of a dead end relationship or you, you don't even see a future in it anymore. And you're very anxious every single day about it. Okay. Whatever it is. I want you to, number one, write all of it down. That's right. Write all your current reality down first. Now, if you're watching this and you like this, then I'm going to suspect that you are a leader or at least you want to learn more about how to lead yourself. Now, John Maxwell always talks about uh, if someone wants to be a leader and they say, hey, I'm a leader, right? They're telling everyone I'm a leader, but no one's actually following them. What are they actually doing? They're just simply taking a walk. And I don't want you to experience that. Now, you're going to have to take a walk a little bit, you know, in your journey. If you don't have any influence, if you don't have anyone following you, that is quite okay. But someone does not want to follow a non-competent leader. Competence, of course, character, and then competence, and then confidence. You can't have all the confidence in the world and no character. You can't have character and no confidence and no competence. You have to have the three C's, right? And that's just a, a kind of a side note to leadership is character first, okay, who you are as a person. Number two is the competence to understand what you're trying to lead people in, okay? I can't lead you in carpentry because I, I know nothing about carpentry. Does that make sense? But I can show you how to develop teams. I can show you how to write a book. I can show you how to inspire and encourage the average person to perform above average, which is definition of leadership in my opinion. I can show you how to work out. I can show you how to lead a family, okay, be a, be a good father. I can do that, but, but I can't show you how to build a building, okay, because I've never done it before. So I think if you want to lead somebody, of course, the first person you want to lead is yourself, and you want to lead yourself out of maybe some anxiety so that you can have a, a truly compelling future, then I'm glad that you're watching this. So let's go over this. Five things. Number one, Max Dupree says this quote, which I've quoted a lot on stages across America, because if we're going to do anything together, if we're going to get from point A to point B, if we're going to accomplish anything, if we're going to have a compelling five-year vision and, 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 and write a book that's a bestseller, make millions of dollars, uh, if we're going to um, you know, lead others and inspire others, <clears throat> and, and people are just like so appreciative and grateful for what you've done, well, you, the first responsibility of a leader is to define reality. Now, 
that might be to you a, a cute quote, okay? Okay, define reality, what does that mean? All of your darkness, okay? There's, there's, there's something about everybody, and I think Kobe Bryant had the best kind of the mamba, right? So we had that dark side, the snake, the mamba. But Kobe Bryant, if you watch any interview, I mean, the guy had the most incredible smile, good looking charisma. I mean, it's almost like he couldn't harm a fly, you know what I mean? But then you see him on the basketball court, he was devastating to his opponents and he was that black mamba. I think um, anyone that wants to be a great person in life, they have to conquer their dark side, their current reality, what's really dark. It could be a pornography problem that you have right now that's very dark, nobody knows about it. it could be an affair that you're having on your wife right now or your husband and uh, you think, it won't come out. And, and you know, maybe it doesn't come out, but it's, it's, it's really going to come out on you, right? And it's very dark, right? It's, you know, maybe you deal with depression and you have suicidal thoughts and things are just tough, right? You just, you kind of want to give up, but you're not getting the help that you need. You need to identify this. Okay. Now I'm not saying you have to go tell the world, you have to go post on your social media or Facebook, but you need to identify just for yourself in a private journal, get a lock on it if you need to. So nobody steals it or whatever, or a private file, but you need to type out or write out. I love journaling, I mean, this is $3, okay? Um, and a nice pen, I love to write out what I'm dealing with. So every morning I do my meditations, I'm reading my Bible and I'm writing out kind of a prayer journal of this is my current reality. These are the things that I don't like and some of the things that I do like because the things that I do like, that's gonna add a lot of happiness in my life. That, that's something that I can immediately say in the morning, I'm grateful for this because I've identified what is my current. Now, it's not like you do this once and you're done, okay? It's not like I've identified my current reality once, I'm done, okay? No, do it every morning, do it every week, do it every month, or just kind of have a list and, and subtract and add to it every single day when you are doing your quiet time or your meditation or whatever. And, and also make sure that you include all the dark sides. You know, the, the, my bank account is this. I have no income here. I don't have assets. I have a bunch of liabilities. I have a lot of credit card debt. I, uh, I'm overweight. I'm out of shape. I'm, I'm not where I need to be, okay? I'm, I'm fearing this. This is what I fear. This is why I'm not moving. But, but at the end of the day, though, if you ever want to be a leader, you have to be honest with yourself. Self-awareness leads to the choice to make a change. Self-awareness leads for you that choice. Now, a lot of people, you, you probably know these people, right? They have no self-awareness. I mean, they're loud, they're obnoxious, they're drunk, they drink a lot, they're way overweight. And, and I don't think they know about it, right? It's like they, you literally watch them and it's like you just want the popcorn. You're like, oh my gosh, what is going on with this person? You know, they keep self-sabotaging their relationships. And, but maybe, I mean, maybe you and, and other friends have told them about it and they're like, nah, I'm good, bro. Eventually, hopefully, Either God intervenes or someone else intervenes. It basically has kind of an awareness with them. But that's where you need to come into this first and foremost if you ever want to lead people is what is the self-awareness? Now, if you're really having a hard time with it, I would, I would say ask some of your closest colleagues, some of your closest friends that know you best, even family members, to, give, to ask them what are some things about you in any area of your life that you would like to change and maybe that they think you know, that, that, you know, there's some issues there. Okay. Now I'm not saying you have to sit, you know, change everything about you, whatever they tell you, you've got to change. I'm not even talking about that. You can say, yeah, that's true. Me, yeah, that's not so true. That is true. And then you can hone on that one or two things in the next step. Okay. So the first responsibility of a leader, if you want to be a leader, if you want to lead others, if you even want to make a living doing this, you want to be an entrepreneur, you, cause this is really where it starts is the current reality. Okay. Now, the second thing of that is, what is the greatest challenge that you're facing? And, and, and with that current reality, what do you hate about it? So, okay, so usually what you hate is usually one of your greatest challenges, but your greatest challenge should also be your greatest you know, strength. Okay, so you, whatever you're really, really strong at, maybe you are amazing at making money, but maybe you horrible at saving money, right? So your greatest strength is your greatest weakness. So what is your greatest challenge? And then I would also add to that, number two is, what do you hate about what you wrote down about your current reality? Okay, because that needs to shift. So what you're doing is you're kind of allowing your brain to have an honest look. Um, and, and, and it's like from, from the top down looking in, right? So it's almost that third party is better than first party. So you finally have it in front of you. You're reading it. And I'm assuming, you know, you, you're a pretty smart person. So intellectually, you're looking at it like, you know what? I don't like this life. There has to be something like, what am I doing wrong here? So 
And I think all of us can have this. I don't care if you're already a millionaire. Um, you know, not everyone. I've never met any, everyone that has like that wheel of life, like all six things at 10, right? Which makes a perfect wheel, a perfect circle. Usually it's like, okay, I, I might be a 10 in my relationships when it comes to maybe my spouse, but I'm, I'm a two in finances out of 10. I'm a one spiritually out of 10. Maybe I'm an eight out of 10 physically, right? So it's kind of like a, a kind of a flat tire, if you will. So I say all that because we've got to identify where the flat tire is. Not every aspect of your life, you're probably crushing it in certain aspects of your life, which again, that's a current reality too. So when you write your current reality, it's not just about the negative stuff, it's also about the positive stuff. And that's what I want you to be grateful for. So the positive stuff first, the gratitude first, and then and, and be open-minded enough to look at the ugly stuff, the dark side of you, and to be honest about how, and then now we can come up with practical steps, really number three, and that's the solutions. So for instance, if you have an addiction to pornography, okay, I would say, just from my own kind of experience with that for, for years and years, don't try to get off it. A cold turkey like don't try to just be like I'm gonna pray I'm gonna I'm gonna have accountability with my pastor no just get you know express VPN right just get some kind of internet provider that will not allow you to look at that stuff on the internet right it, or if you do then then someone's gonna know you looked at it, like your spouse okay or like your mom okay so you're not gonna do that if your mom knows but hey you have to do that Okay, you, if, if, if you're struggling with an addiction, I don't care if it's alcohol, that's why the alcoholic anonymous, you have an accountability partner. Accountability is the strongest motivator there is. I mean, if you're just dealing with something privately and you're not writing it down that this is my current reality, it's, you're gonna keep going down that, that, that rabbit hole, okay? And you're gonna keep having not a great life, not a better life, but a worse and worse life, okay? And I think as we age, we should actually see more and more success because we are. Technically speaking, let's say we're getting wiser, right? Because we're living longer. We have our, the, the lifespan nowadays could be all the way up to 120 years of age in our lifetime. I mean, I'm 42. I mean, because there's so many different things out there that are helping longevity of life. So I would think, right, we all want to get better with age. We want to get smarter with age. We want to, even a lot of us get better looking in shape more. I mean, I like the way I look now than I did when I was 22 or 32. You know, and, and, and that's how you kind of want to feel, right? You have more value, the, the more years that you have on you because you're more wiser, you have more experience. But unfortunately, that's not the case with a lot of people. They're getting broker, they're getting fatter, they're getting aged more. The stress is literally killing people uh, at a lot, uh, you know, high blood pressure. Obviously, we know that's the silent killer. Heart attacks, heart issues. Um, obesity is more prevalent than ever. Uh, the way that people eat is not really the right way. I mean, obviously just go to any mall in America or, you know, in the summertime, you go to like an amusement park and you just sit there and watch. Like 90% of people, 95% of people are not in shape at all. And again, that's not try I'm not trying to be mean at all, but it's very rare that I see a 40 year old with a six pack. Think about that. It's very rare that I see a man or a woman that's 40 years old or, or more with a six pack. You gotta work for it, right? So anyway, let's bring that into it, number three to really get rid of that anxiety because this is a practical strategy that you're getting rid of anxiety is what is the solutions here? So what is the greatest challenge or what are your challenges? And then what is the solution? So for instance, if it's pornography, you're going to download um, like ExpressVPN, uh, which is an app and that just blocks it out or some, um, some things that are gonna block that out so that you have no access, you can't, even if you get that urge, you just can't. It's the same thing with the grocery store. If, like, if you want to lose weight, well, maybe you shouldn't do the grocery shopping. Maybe your spouse should if they're healthier than you or you have accountability because if you buy the chips, if you buy the Oreos, if you buy the ice cream where some of you were, it's almost like tequila, like for the alcoholic, if they have one drop of tequila, forget it, okay? Because that is a disease. So like they don't even recognize them. So they'll just drink and drink and drink. Some people have an obesity disease. And if they have one cup of ice cream, that whole thing, that pint is gone. But if you never bought the pint, right, which is the solution, then you're going to start to forget about it because you're forming new habits because you actually identified, I don't want to be obese anymore. I don't want to be overweight. I want to be healthy. That's my current reality. I'm 50 pounds overweight. That's my current reality. Okay, great. I hate that about myself. Here's why. And it's not just about looks. I want to look good in a bikini. No, it's not just about that. Although, Hey, that's, that's fine if that is true, but there's, what about blood pressure and, 
you know, being overweight, not feeling good, feeling sluggish, not being consistent in the gym. I mean, obviously that is a solution. So, but you can't just write down solutions and then go back into the same lifestyle. So identify your current reality. What is the greatest challenges? Number three, what is the solutions? Getting that accountability partner, telling people about this. And then number four, uh, having your dreams put everywhere. Okay, you versus your dreams. What is your dreams? Identifying what is the five-year vision? What is this gonna get you to? How is this gonna help you become wealthier? How is this gonna help you become sexier? How is this gonna help you, you know, identifying in public like you're actually building more status? Let's talk about status real quick. As much as you might not agree with me, we, you and I, we want more status in life. That is just the way we're wired. That's just the way people are wired. Meaning, if you walk into a room, do you want people to be like, wow, you look great. And it's almost like people are like, what, the, what, what are they doing? I mean, they, they just look terrific. Or, or have you heard about that person? Oh my God, they're so successful. I mean, man, I like to introduce you, but I know I, it's status. Now, I'm not speaking of ego, okay? But you look at celebrities, you look at sports figures, you look at businessmen and women, when they walk into a room, uh, the good ones, they brighten the room, right? They don't dim the room with their negativity and their status quo and their mediocrity. Have you ever seen a mediocre person that barely has accomplished anything walk into a room and everyone's like, wow, oh my gosh, they don't work out, they're not successful, they have a horrible relationship with their kids, marriage is broken, and they walk in the room and it's like, wow, so, I mean, maybe God thinks that, right? Because God loves all of us equally, but humans are not wired that way, they're just not. See, we are inspired by people with status. And, and, and I'm not talking about just money and girls and Lamborghinis, okay? That, that To me, there's a narcissistic status, but I'm talking about the healthy status where people are just, you know, not just even impressed by you, they respect you. They respect the fact that when you walk into a room, you are respected just the way that you look. You know, that you, that you, obviously if you got veins popping out of your arms, you got muscles, uh, whether you're male or female, people are like, you know, obviously that person's disciplined. So you're gaining their trust, especially if you're in sales like I am, if you're an entrepreneur, if you're trying to sell anything, you're gaining someone's trust right away because the way that you carry yourself, the way that you actually are healthy with yourself, speaks volumes about who you really are, you know, behind closed doors. Because we all know you can't buy, you can have a billion dollars, and I know a lot of billionaires are out of shape, okay? And I'm not gonna mention names. There's a, most billionaires are out of shape, okay? You can have all the money in the world, you can't buy abs, you can't buy biceps, you can't buy good looks, okay? You, you know, just like the natural, well, you know, the V-shaped, you know, got that V, get the, the round shoulders for, I'm not talking for men, right? The shoulders, the tri, the, tri, the tries, you know, the biceps, you know, I'm six foot six, so it takes a while to really bulk up for me because I'm, I'm pretty tall. But, you know, I, I'm, pre I'm pretty healthy, you know, good looking guy, right, what I think. But so I walk in, people are like, who takes care of himself? So he'll take care of me if I'm his client right away. That's like a subconscious thing. So maybe your challenge is, is you can't get clients for your coaching company is probably because you're great. You probably have great content. You're probably a great coach over the phone, but you know, they just don't, they don't like, they don't like how you look, you know? It's like you post on social media. It's like having a, a overweight personal trainer. And I know we're spending a lot of time on the obesity and it's not like, that's not my brand. I'm not like a personal trainer, but I'm just giving these things because this is how we think, like it or not, this is how we think. It's the same in dating. Okay, we want the most attractive person to us. I mean, obviously beauty is in the eye of the beholder, but I think we all can agree that having an in-shape person is, is pretty cool, right? But anyway, we think of character even. Like, I remember I said the three C's, character, competence, and then confidence. Now let's talk about confidence real quick. So if you do something for 10,000 hours, if you do something for even 1,000 hours, you know, John Maxwell talks about, you know, um, he learned from, from uh Someone, uh, I think it's Earl Nightingale. Um, if you do something one hour a day for five years straight, you'll become an expert. One hour a day, five years, you'll be an expert. Okay, so seven days a week, all year for five years. Anything, leadership, I don't care if it's uh, you know studying chemistry, biology, politics, you're gonna be in five years absolutely an expert. Okay, that's why I wanna do that. I'm, I wanna be the expert of leadership. I mean, I wanna be the next John Maxwell. You know, like I've, I've, I've done leadership so much behind closed doors. I've learned so much. I've messed up so much. I've had a little success, but I wanna continue to learn more about that, right? That you versus you battle, leading myself so that eventually I can help add value to others. Well, at the end of the day, that, that's what it is. It's the respect of someone that is confident because of the small successful attempts in a proven system that they've done over the years. 
So the competence uh, drives the confidence. It's not the other way around. You can't fake it to you. Make it be like, hey, I'm, I'm confident, guys. How you doing? Dad Gale. I mean, broke is a joke. You're living at your mom's house. You're in your 40s, like the movie Step Brothers. And, and, and you like go into a room. Yeah, of course, you could be confident for an hour. You could be confident for a day. But if somebody that's very successful, way more than you, even wants to get in business with you, eventually the truth will come out. You're not confident, you're not confident, and you faked it till you make it kind of mindset, which I do not recommend. Anyway, you versus your dreams, you have to be very, very confident, confident on where you're going. Very confident about this is where I want to, this is what I want to be, this is what I want to do, this is what I want to have. This is my dreams, right? And I would say keep that close to the heart. Don't be telling everybody because uh, there's a lot of naysayers out there. Dream big, think big on every aspect of your life. And then number five, that routine. See, this is, I think, one of the most fun and most important is like learning all this and then putting something in actual writing. This is what I do on a day-to-day -day basis. This is my Monday through Friday. This is my weekend, even growing on the weekend, even though it's a lot more maybe family time for you. This is the prospects that I'm gonna reach out to. This is the books that I'm gonna read this month. This is where that's going to come from because that confidence is gonna drive out the anxiety. See, the more that I do something successfully, the less anxiety that I have. The more confident that I, I am showing up for my day, the less anxiety I'm gonna have about the day. See, I think we have a lot of anxiety naturally if we're not confident of a situation. But the more that we think about it, the more that we prep about it, that's why you, and I'll leave you with this, that's why you could do anything. I'm a first time actor, okay? But I'm studying acting. I'm, I'm reading the books. I hired an acting coach. I'm getting that competence so that I can have the confidence, so that I can perform in front of a camera, so I can continue to do that and make even a career out of it. That's because of the dreams and the current reality. Hey, the current reality says, I suck at acting. I'm not that good. I've never done it. I'm not competent. I'm not confident about it. But you know what? I can pivot and I can change that. And that's really the message I wanna share with you today. Whatever you wanna do in life, it really starts with those three C's. Of course, anxiety is gonna come. And it might come more for others, of course, even from genetics or maybe the way that your father or mother raised you. Of course, I'm there with you. I've had it more than anyone I've really known. Like I said, I've attempted suicide before, you know, uh, twice in the past. But at the end of the day, this is the stuff that continues to keep me positive, continues to also keep me busy. Okay, because I'm not just hanging out and because and that's where a lot more anxiety is going to come. So she has a man, you got to be purpose driven. You got to absolutely be purpose driven in your life because there's a calling by God. That's where the spirituality comes in. But you have the choice. You can go this way or you can go that way. So I just recommend pray every day. Yes. Get on your hands and knees. Pray uh, to God, whatever you want and really believe that. But it's the action that you're going to take after that prayer. It's the competence that you're gonna to wanna to create. It's the learning, it's the education, it's the action, it's the confidence that you get when you walk into the room, maybe a year from now, two years from now, five years from now, you're gonna be the guy or girl that maybe someone asked for an autograph. You're gonna be the, 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 the competent, confident leader that people are like wowed by. Maybe right now you're in your basement, right? Living with your mom and you might be 39 years old. That's okay, right? But this is how you're gonna get out of it. This is how you're gonna absolutely accomplish things that you never thought are possible because you're dreaming bigger. You're also getting rid of the inner circle maybe you currently have that's, not, that's actually holding you back. Believe it or not, the five friends that you have around you are gonna either make or break you and you gotta do something about it, okay? And if you don't have five friends, well, you need to get five friends, but choose wisely. And if you have five friends, maybe, yeah, they're loyal to you and whatever, but they're smoking weed, they're doing all these things, it's just, it's just not where you wanna be, then maybe your best friends are people on YouTube for now. Maybe it's the people you're mentoring from, from afar, even if you don't have money. But then when you start to get money, then you invest some of that money into a coach, into a mentor, someone that's going to add value to you, someone that's even gonna coach you one-on-one -on -one like myself and what I do. So again, if you're interested in any of that, you can hit me up on obviously YouTube, but more importantly, you can hit me up on Instagram, uh, Todd M. Cahill, uh, T-O-D-D-M-C-A-H-I-L-L. -L. Love to have a conversation with you. Uh, I'm kind of in, you know, I've done a lot in my life successfully, but I'm also just starting out here on YouTube and I wanna grow that, I wanna add value. Uh, I love helping people grow. Uh, and I love growing myself, most importantly, okay? So hopefully you have that burning desire like I do to be the best you can for your family, for your children, for that legacy that you wanna create and, and get out of your comfort zone. And you might need that help, of course. I think we all need that help, but hopefully this five, these five things can help you get going. But obviously I could talk a lot more in depth about a lot of these things in, in the future I will on these videos. So thanks so much for watching this. Take care and we'll see you next time.